This is Katura Plus One on Foundation FM. And as I mentioned earlier, there's a special guest joining me on the show for the trilogy. The trilogy is a series of three related works of art. So for each segment of the trilogy, I'll sit down with a super talented artist or producer and we'll discuss their journey via one of their past and early records, a more recent release from the past year or two, and finally, their current release, i.e. from the future. So I'm pleased to say that I'm joined by a supremely talented individual for this one. He's a DJ, producer, singer-songwriter, vandalizer. His name is Mr. Jerome Vandal. Yes. <laughs> What's happening, Jerome? How you doing? I'm good, man. I'm good. Really, really happy. Uh, I've had very good responses to my latest release. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's, things are just going great. Even though uh, the world is on fire, everything is going good with me. Yeah. You nice. know? So bit. that's a blessing. I'm happy. Yeah, a little bit of personal joy is always good. So I guess for anybody who may not have come across you yet, um, when did you start making music? So if we start with your first record, um, the one that sort of, I guess, either got you into music or started on your journey um, into music? And did that start, okay. you were a DJ before a musician, right? Or was that the which no, way? No, uh, the other way around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I started making music, like first instrument I played like a long time ago. I was 10 years old. Mm -hmm. Then I got into music production. Um, you know, I studied uh, music production and everything. But then uh, at some point, that this was in 2012, um, you know, SoundCloud came up and and I started getting a lot of streams, and then there was this opportunity where this vocalist called uh, Iman Europe from LA, she sent out uh, a cappella of um, Just Hold On, We're Going Home by Drake, but she yeah. recorded it herself, and then she posted it like, hey, I'm looking for producers to put a beat underneath this acapella. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did, and I posted it, and it kind of, it kind of went, viral you yeah. know like if i have to say it like that for like those days you know I, it got a lot of streams and around that time i didn't really like my study anymore okay so i decided yeah. you know i saw oh man 5k streams <laughs> <laughs> let's let's quit school man but you no know, you know, like, but no but, but there was there was definitely more going on you know i was already thinking about it and i felt this strong urge of like yo i'm onto something that the energy was right to do it, you know. My parents yeah. didn't agree, but I did it, and I went for for it a full hundred. So um, I guess that's the record. Okay. That it's not a record; it's a remix. Yeah. It's a record, but you know, it's not an official uh, original tune. Yeah. But that's the song that made me decide to go for music. So that's why that's like the first record I picked. Okay, so let's play uh, Jerome's remix of Man Europe's vocals of Drake. Hold on, we're going on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Cause you're a bad boy, you know it. You are so different around me. But you're a bad boy, you know it. I know exactly what you could be. Just so dumb. So moving on from uh, your remix of Hold On We're Going Home, what is what was the transition between that point in, we said 2012, did you say? 2012, yeah. In 2012, yeah, until uh, 20, well, until, until your next record, until yeah. your next important record. What was the next important record uh, and how did that happen? That was in 2016. Uh, in between, I've been doing a lot of music, you know, I released an EP. Yes. Which was good, you know, it was good for experience and, and you know, I learned how, how, how like releasing a full project works. I've done a lot of shows and mm -hmm. I've gotten into like, um, I became part of uh, Selection. Yeah. The base label, still mm -hmm. part of it. And, and that kind of pushed me, you know, to do international gigs and, mm -hmm. you know, they really put me, um, gave me a platform. Yeah. So that was really good. And all that experience led me to make the record someone that you love okay. and in that record you know i, I started doing sessions mm -hmm. uh, my first 
session ever with somebody in the studio. I was so nervous. Yeah. It was in 2015. So that's, that's, that's quite recently, actually. You know? I mean, it's, now it's five years. But, you know, thinking about, like, that I made Someone That You Love in 2016. Uh, so I started doing sessions with this uh, vocalist, Olivia Nelson. Yeah. Nice. And at that point, I started really studying songs and, and how, how, how like song structures work and, and, and what, what works and what doesn't. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how I experimented with Someone That You Love. And I tried to blend what I like, like soulful R&B music with, with stuff that's accessible. Okay. And that's how Someone That You Love came about. And I think it's my most streamed record to date. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's hear that one. This is uh, Drew Vandor and Olivia Nelson, Someone That You Love. Okay, so fast forward to 2020. As we yes. said earlier, the world is crazy. There is a lot of <laughs> happening right now. Nobody yeah. knows what's happening. We're in a very weird place. But amongst all of that, you've been able to release an incredible EP. I've been listening to it since it dropped last week. Um, the production, the vocalist, the, the songs that you're vocaling, like the whole as a package, it's just a really nice piece of music. So congrats on that. I Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Deserves it. Yeah, it's a yeah. really record. So it's called uh, Suburban Superhero. Yes. And you already had an EP with the same, yeah. right? So this is kind of, kind of like the, the, the I kind of want to make it like, a, you know, like how Batman has more episodes. Okay. That's how, because, uh, you know, Suburban Superhero, I think that's me. You yeah. know, that's how I, how I, you know, I, I don't want to be, uh, how do you say it? How do you say it? I don't want to call myself a superhero, but mm -hmm. that's like how I felt coming from where I'm from and, and, and like okay. quitting school and decided, deciding to make music and then being able to travel the world and, and, and pay my own rent. You know, for some of my friends, seeing me DJ and seeing me do all that stuff, they, they want, someone once told me, yeah, you're like a superhero, man. And I'm like, oh, wow, that, that's where I came from, you know? Yeah. And, and, and um, I kind of translated that in this new project because, um, you know, when you travel a lot, when you DJ a lot, mm -hmm. um, you know, you get offered alcohol, you, you're out late, there's temptations, and that's like a darker side of, of being a DJ and an artist. You know, there's uh, temptations, people trying to drain your energy, or not trying to drain your energy, they they don't do it on purpose, but when they talk to you and when they're around you, it can it can drain your energy, you know. Yeah. And that's like the 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 the, the dark side, like drinking too much, uh, hanging out with 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 girls that you're not supposed to hang out with. <laughs> you know, that's yeah. You know, it, it it might sound funny, but that's like kind of the the side that made me unhappy. So okay. that's the villain, yeah. you know, like the okay. my bad side. Okay. And then the superhero part in this is me deciding, like, yo. I've had enough of this, uh, this, this unhealthy lifestyle. I'm going to change it up. I'm going to stop drinking for a while. I'm going to train. Yeah, uh, you went hard on the training. So, so <laughs> yeah. You know, like, I, exactly. Like, the way I looked, um, if I look at a picture, the way I, the way I looked and the way I look now, like, like shape-wise and everything, the way I think, it's a big difference. And that's because, of course, I matured, but that's also because I made a very – uh, mature decision to yeah. take better care of myself and um, that's why it's called Suburb Superhero right. The Villain Within you know I, I try to right, okay. fight my bad habits and it's not that I'm like completely healthy and, and everything so that would be boring you know there's still a fire burning in, inside yeah. of me the villain is still alive and I will always battle him but you know I'm just I'm just a bit stronger and that's the the whole story behind it so the next record 
that I want to talk about. Sorry for talking so much, but no, it's all good. Actually, two records. So um, one is My Way. That's about um, breaking out of an unhealthy relationship mm -hmm. and going your own way, you yeah. know. And then um, it's a medley because it, it comes from my colors performance. Yes. And the second the the second record I do is called um, Bad Shit. Um, am I supposed? Am I allowed to swear? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Okay, good, good. Because that's been, yeah, bad shit. And that's um, a love song to alcohol. You know, like... Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, oh, that's, that's what I'm talking about. In the, right, okay. Yeah, so you, you, could, you could see it as, as if I'm talking to a person. Yeah. But you know, the chorus goes like, Every time I think of you, bad shit, bad, bad shit. shit bad you know, like, knowing this, it, it probably make, makes a bit more sense mm. as well. So um, that's like the, the future record. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, that's it. so the first one is my way. My way, and then Coltrane. Yeah, yeah, and then the second one is uh, bad shit. But Coltrane is not on this version because uh, I performed it myself. Yes. So I had to just do do it all by myself. And I guess me singing on my own productions is is a is also a, revolu uh, a revolution. <laughs> a evolution coming from from like the, the the record before that I picked someone yeah. that you love. Every time I think of you, bad shit, bad shit happens. After all I did to you, bad shit, bad shit happens. So baby, now I'm getting looser when I'm drinking up the goose. Yeah. Every time I think of you, bad shit, bad shit happens. What instruments do you play, and what instruments do you play on the EP? Um keys and I just program the drums and everything so I mean I'm not a, I'm not a, like a key player or, or like a pianist or something but I just taught myself how to play and I can play good enough to kind of produce you know and if I practice I can perform mm -hmm. but it's not that I can like play whatever I hear or something it's, okay. it's, it's not that crazy yeah and do you find that there's any parallels between DJing and production like in terms of, is. I don't know, there maybe is. how you choose the records that you play, how you mix them together. Like, what would you say are those yeah. parts? There is, you know, they, they, they feed off each other. I mean, I started as a producer and I was going out a lot and, and, and seeing DJs play um, kind of made me curious of how, how they did that. Mm -hmm. And then I started DJing and I thought, oh, wow, okay, this is so, and, and I, I realized it's a whole different discipline. And then going back into music production, uh, I started making music that was more suitable for the club at some point. Yeah. So that's how DJing, you know, um, uh, influenced my production. Okay. And now okay. when I produce music, I try to, like, I, I'm, I don't necessarily make music for the clubs when it's my original music. Mm -hmm. I more so make music that's uh, nice to perform with a band. Yes. Oh, so that's kind of what I think about sometimes. And then when I make DJ edits and remixes, that's like full on club stuff, you know? And, and that's, that's kind of what came out of, of, of uh, DJing. Okay. So, so it's, it's, it's not the same, but it definitely feeds off each other. Yeah. So yeah. looking at the vandalized edits, which are obviously like three volumes now, three, four? Um, I can't remember. A few. Wow. <laughs> Uh, yeah, wait, four, yeah, four, four. four. Oh, yeah. yeah. So in terms of like how you come up with the ideas for those, is it a similar, pro similar process to when you're making original music? Um, similar, yeah. But, but um, I have to say, and this, this is something I, I, I started noticing once I started making more original music, once I go into that vandalized, creation process yeah. yeah i have to switch it up i i literally have to start making edits mm. for for a week straight to 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 get that mindset of like everything i hear oh i could make an edit of that and and before i used to dj a lot you know uh i still dj a lot obviously now because of corona i don't yeah. but it was easier to stay in that mindset but now i kind of have to switch it on you know yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And then what would you yeah. say is your favorite between DJing, producing music, 
or performing live with a live band? Which would you say is your favorite? Wow. I mean, that's nothing like a feeling when you play a record and everybody around you is just like, whoa, just, you know, so happy to hear the song and, and the energy that you feel then is like, you know, it, it, maybe, it's a, maybe it's, it's a bit of a scary thing because you kind of feel that power that you have when you, mm. you know, when you, I once saw a D'Angelo documentary and it was talking about that, that power and control you had over the crowd. And that's scary, but that feeling is also really amazing. So DJing is definitely good, but I feel making music and being happy with, with creating something that you've never created before and yeah. stepping out of that comfort zone and, and the, the satisfaction that that gives is even better. Because okay. you know that, that, that kind of, you also know that with, with music, original music, you kind of build a legacy and that's like yeah. very long term. So I guess making music, creating producing is is my favorite yeah and yeah it's, it's, it's tough to choose i guess so but, I guess all yeah. of like who you are as a person yeah yeah and if exactly. you have to nail it down to say like three things that have enabled your career to progress in the last like eight years you know from doing that original remix challenge to getting to the point where you know you're on spotify billboards now in your hometown and yeah. <laughs> which is amazing and you've reached a level where you know you've got original music out and you're happy with it and you're doing color sessions what would you say and maybe like because you also mentioned that you know your parents wasn't necessarily happy with your decision but you felt like yeah pursuing music was something that you needed to do what would you say are three things that either kept you going or enabled you to do that and sort of like helped you mm -hmm. to build your career first of all uh, you know and this the, these kind of answers are always going to sound uh, very cliche yeah but first of all it's like following my heart so my passion what i really felt you know because that's what music why i got into music in the first place because it felt good and and because and i was just attracted to that feeling that music gave me you know so definitely staying close to what i want to do uh reflecting mm -hmm. the self-reflecting like and that means that's multiple things you know that's that's trying to reinvent yourself just trying to see like, hey, what am I good at? What do I need to, what's my strength? What's my, what, what can I be better at, you know? So self-reflecting. And um, the last one, I guess, is, is just going for it. Just being, being, you know, sometimes being reckless and just go with the flow and don't think too much. Because I've noticed when I think too much and when I try too hard, it's never as good as when I just, you know, I can I guess that's kind of the same as the first one. Uh, I get, but that's that's just that's just yeah, it for yeah, me, you know. That's that's that's, good. You know, because I feel when I made that decision, I kind of had a good feeling about it, mm -hmm. and because I mm -hmm. believed in it so much, uh, it just it just um, it just happened, and it just happened the way it was supposed to happen, and it might sound very spiritual and 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 like very like. Woo, but it's that's just how it how it is you know if you if you follow your heart and if you do something that you really want to do mm. you're just going to gravitate to it and you're always going to find a solution if or, or like you're always going to end up in the right place yeah whether in the moments where you kind of felt like it wasn't going the way you wanted it to or something didn't kind of turn out the way you expected how in those moments how did you keep keep going and stay focused on like your end goal what kept you going in those moments um yeah that that's just simply reflecting talking to my management my friends mm -hmm. you know and, and 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 they kind of pulled me through it as well and these things need to happen in order for me to to go uh sorry my english is not my english is not my main language so i have to think yeah, you know, yeah. how, I, how i say it right but these things need to happen in order for me to know what went wrong Mm -hmm. and to better myself and to just be on the right path again so you know that's just um yeah just reflecting and talking to my friends and just just failing if that's, that's just what it is you know sometimes you just need to fail and and that's completely fine it hurts you know but it's, it's completely fine